Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Thank you for joining me for the Trumpet of Truth podcast. My name is Brother Greg Bray. I'm the pastor of Lighthouse Baptist Church in Bruce, Mississippi. Hey, neighbor. Thank you for joining me for the Trumpet of Truth podcast. Last week I talked about my preacher heroes. I love preachers. I love the church. I love what preachers do in the church. I love evangelists. I love, I just love preaching. I love listening to preaching as I'm working, as I'm driving down the road. I just love preachers. I want to do something a little different today but all ties together. Everything that I talk about on the podcast ties together. Uh, the thing that I want to talk about today is the churches that I've pastored. I've pastored several churches, uh, some while I was in college and some not very long, some uh, the one that I'm pastoring right now for a long time, and I'll talk more about that a little bit later. But I want to talk about those churches today just a little bit, just give very little information about them. I don't want to say anything negative about the churches, but I want to talk about my learning experience in the churches that I've pastored. All of the churches that I've pastored are in the state of Mississippi. The first church that I pastored at the age of 19, just right after I surrendered to preach, I surrendered to preach in July of 1985, and then in, uh, I turned 19 in December, or 20 in December of 1985, but I went to Pastor New Hope Baptist Church in Yellowbusha County, Mississippi in uh, October, they called me in October of 1985, and then I was ordained by Calvary Baptist Church, my home church, in November of 1985, and course being the pastor of New Hope Baptist Church for about 18 months I was there. I started the Blue Mountain College in 1986 while I was a pastor there and I'll tell you this that I learned more about pastoring pastoring the church than I did in some of the classes that I took at Blue Mountain College that was supposed to help me in being a pastor and all of that. A little country church way out in the country uh, near Coffeyville, Mississippi. Uh, But uh, it was an experience. All I knew to do was preach. All I knew to do was open the Bible and preach what the Bible said. That's the way I'd I'd been raised. And uh, I thank God for that church that taught me so much, people in that church that loved on me and cared for me, and I really appreciate that. Uh, I left there after 18 months because of some things that happened, and and I'll not go into those things. Like I said, I'm not going to talk about any negativity in the churches, but uh, but that God used that church, and had it not been for that church, there's some things... Uh, that I experienced later on that I would not have known how to handle had it not been for that church. All I know to do is take a stand for what's right, and that's what I've done. The second church that I pastored was Turkey Creek Baptist Church. Turkey Creek Baptist Church is in the same county that I pastor in now, the same county that I was raised in, Calhoun County, Mississippi. Uh, Turkey Creek was is in the west end of the county, and again, another learning experience, an experience that uh, I uh, thank God for. Again, they took me in as a young preacher for about two years. I pastored there. They loved on me. They cared for me. As I was pastoring this church, I met my wife, Michelle, and we were married while I was pastoring this church, and a wonderful experience for a newlywed couple at Turkey Creek Baptist Church. 
thank God for these people that took us both in, loved on us, cared for us. Uh, we listen. They, uh, we we just had a friendship and a bond, and uh, had some young couples there in the church that took us in, uh, a little older than we are, but took us in, cared for us, and uh, I appreciate uh, that church. I was there for about two years, and uh, God truly blessed that that time that we were there. Uh, had some people saved while we were in that church. Praise God for the salvation of of people, salvation of souls. It means so much. I uh, had some wonderful experience in revival services in that church. Uh, God did some great things. God helped some people. Uh, God used me to pull this church out of a out of a. a a down time in which they had lost a lot of members. Uh, but thank God for Turkey Creek Baptist Church. It was after about two years at Turkey Creek Baptist Church, a little church in Aberdeen, Mississippi, on a road called Coontail Road. They called me to be their pastor, Grace Chapel Baptist Church, uh, a different church, different from New Hope Baptist Church, different from Turkey Creek Baptist Church where there were uh, a small handful of people and and uh, elderly people that, that took me in to a church, now Grace Chapel Baptist Church, that was uh, full of young people and elderly people, uh, some that we uh, were able to influence, some that were saved at that church. As a matter of fact, we had a, a big amount of people that were saved in that church. The church grew. Uh, we went from uh, being in a church where there were 20 or and under in, in church and in Sunday school uh, to a church that had between 80 and 100 in Sunday school after we'd been there a little while. We were there about 18 months. Again, an experience that taught me, and when I, when I say taught me, Taught me how to be a pastor. Taught me how to uh, treat people. And uh, sometimes being mistreated, I learned how to treat people that mistreated me. Uh, Jesus said, uh, uh, thank God he said this because it helps us not to feel alone. So persecuted they the prophets which were before you. So we're not the only ones that are, have been persecuted for standing for Jesus, uh, but God used some different things to to help me to uh, to understand how I'm to love people, no matter what happens, no matter how they treat me, no matter uh, it doesn't matter if they if they don't love me and don't care for me and don't take me in, love them. And God, God allowed a love inside of me to grow. I, I can't explain how I felt uh, toward people, even in that day. I, I, I just, I was in love with people. I was in love with those people in that church. And, and thank God for a church that God would use to teach me uh, how, to, how to care for people, how to care for people in all ways, and all kinds of people. Thank God for Grace Chapel Baptist Church. After being at Grace Chapel Baptist Church for about 18 months or so, I'm not, not sure the exact dates on all of these churches. I could go back, have them recorded in some notes, but, but after being there for about 18 months, uh, I resigned the church, uh, went on, uh, and was not in the pastorate for a while, for probably about a, another year and a half, uh, I was not pastoring, at, but every Sunday, as far as I can remember, every Sunday, with the exception of just very few Sundays, God used me in churches to fill in for pastors, churches that didn't have pastors. And then one, one day getting a call from a man by the name of Earl Wilbanks at Hamilton Baptist Church, and asked me if I was interested in pastoring. And I said, I am. 
he said, would you like to come at, uh, to Hamilton and, and talk to us? And, and I did. I preached there a few services. And uh, the church called me as their pastor. Unanimous vote, Hamilton Baptist Church. I was there for, Shell and I were there for about four years. And God used another group of little, uh, just a small group of elderly people, three or four younger adults in the church, uh, a couple of children that uh, God used all of these people again to help us to love. Uh, uh, churches, you know, every experience that you have leads up to the next experience. If you're living for God, God's going to use every experience to grow you, to teach you in how that he wants to use you in the next experience in life. And with me, that's been churches. Uh, at, at New Hope Baptist Church, God used that church to to show me how to pastor Turkey Creek Baptist Church. And he used that church with all of the love that I was shown to carry me to the next church, church at Grace Chapel Baptist Church, and then to lead me on to, Tur uh, to Hamilton Baptist Church, which was in the northern part of Mississippi, near the Tennessee line, but still in the state of Mississippi, near Walnut, Mississippi. Our, uh, uh, very confusing when it comes to where we live. They're way out in the country, in the Black Hills of Mississippi. Uh, I, it, it's, it was just a wonderful place to live, a very serene place, and I thank God for that. But um, we, we actually had our telephone was out of Ashland, Mississippi. Our address was Faulkner, Mississippi, but we lived closer to Walnut, Mississippi. And uh, God used that church. God used that church. Uh, some uh, elderly ladies, widow ladies, just church full of them that, that were a blessing to us, that were like mothers and grandmothers to us. Uh, some that were our very close neighbors that just took us in. Thank God for Hamilton Baptist Church. God saved some people there. As a matter of fact, uh, I believe it was in this church uh, that that I had the first uh, a very young child that was saved, and God used uh, that that experience to help me in the next church that I went to pastor. Thank God for Hamilton Baptist Church. After pastoring Hamilton Baptist Church for about four years, the longest I'd ever been at a church, pastored for four years, enjoyable years. Uh, let, let me say this, I went back, I guess, maybe the only church that I have gone back to and preached at several homecomings. And uh, in, in the last time that I preached at a homecoming at Hamilton Baptist Church, it's been a few years ago, uh, some of the people in the church, they didn't have a pastor at the time, and some of the people in the church wanted me to wanted me to come back and be their pastor again. And I had taken my mother with us. Me and Chell had taken my mama with us. And uh, and mama, of course, is a member of the church in which I'm pastoring now, and I was her pastor at the time. And uh, I looked at one of the ladies. I said uh, that one of the ladies that confronted us about it uh, on behalf of the rest of the church, and and I said, ask her, ask my mama if I can come be your pastor. And mama said, no, <laughs> real quick. But uh, but thank God for Hamilton Baptist Church. There about four years, um, and then I got a call from from a man at a church in the county that I'm pastoring in now, Calhoun County, which is my home county, in the southern end of this county. Uh, New Providence Baptist Church. New Providence Baptist Church was another great experience, another time of learning. And I thank God for New Providence Baptist Church. Got very close to some of the people there. Uh, some of those people knew uh, people that I grew up around, uh, knew my family. And, and uh, sometimes that's a bad thing, but it wasn't a bad thing at New Providence Baptist Church. God used that little church, and again, a, a big group of people, a lot of young people in the church at that time, had a lot of 
uh, youth activities in the church. First church I had pastored that had a lot of youth in it uh, besides Grace Chapel Baptist Church. But we had a lot of youth activities in, in New Providence Baptist Church. And that, that helped me to get close to young people, helped me to learn more about young people. Do we need young people to step up today and be a part of the church? Us adults need to be teaching our young people, as as I've seen in the past. I'm not seeing it now. Uh, but I, I, I thank God for New Providence Baptist Church. Again, there for about four years, saw people saved. God directed me in some ways that uh, that taught me, taught me how to love people. That church, New Providence Baptist Church, taught me a love for people like I had never had in the other churches. Even though he taught me love in the other churches, uh, it, w- it was an easy place. It was a place to learn. It was a place to love, a-, a place to be loved, a place to learn about missions. New Providence was a very mission-minded church, and they, they still are as far as I know, and taught me uh, about missions. Thank God for the church. See, I'm still learning. Uh, I was there for about four years. And then leaving there uh, for a very short time, not pastoring, uh, in 2000, July of 2001, uh, I left New Providence Baptist Church. As a matter of fact, I resigned on July the 1st, 2001, went back to Myrtle Baptist Church, uh, where my father-in-law, Brother Earl Farley, is pastor. And was there for a very short time, was confronted by some people and that asked me, would you be willing to start a church? This was in July, uh, the late July 2001, early August. Maybe it was early August at the time we were at Camp Zion. And I believe at that time Camp Zion was in August instead of now. Now it's in July, the last of July. But uh Uh, was confronted by some people about starting a church, people that were driving distances to get some preaching and was interested in having a church closer to their home that they could listen to preaching in. Uh, Churches around uh, not not interested in preaching, more interested in activities, more interested in things, uh, other things than preaching. And and, uh, I I said, let me pray about it. And we kind of made some steps and in August, August 19th, 2001, uh, we organized a church, began meeting in the carport of my parents uh, about three and a half miles east of Bruce, Mississippi, uh, where we're at now. That was in 2001, and for soon be, in less than two months, we'll be about two months, as a matter of fact, will be 21 years as the pastor of Lighthouse Baptist Church in Bruce, Mississippi. And I can honestly say this, that the other five churches that I pastored, they all schooled me for the past 21 years of pastoring at Lighthouse Baptist Church. I've never had an experience as a pastor as I have with the experience of being in the startup of a church. God led me to start this church. We started out with eight members. Uh, We have grown uh, more than double. Uh, We're still a small church, but many people have come in. Many people have went out. God's allowed us to send people out. Thank God for these churches. And I, as I said, I I didn't start this to tell about each church. I started this to tell about how that God uses things in our life, places that we are. It's very important to be where God wants us to be. And God uses each thing that we go through. We may be treated badly in some of them, but just remember this. Remember Romans chapter 8 and verse number 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. 
all things, not some, but God puts it all into a in the great big mixing bowl. I don't know how to explain it any other way. And he mixes it all together. Remember that togetherness to make something good. And it's not for our glory. It's for God's glory. Remember that. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. That's what James said. Get under God and let God use your life that each instance of your life carries you on to the next instance of your life that you might be used of God. I thank you for joining me today. And if there was any message, I just kept feeling like I should go this direction. If there's any message that we could get out of this is that we ought to submit to God. Let him use us that we can be taught of him and we can be used of God in a mighty, mighty way. Listen, people need the Lord. People uh, have broken dreams. People have, uh, uh, their hearts are broken. Their lives are in an uproar, and we can help. And it's my prayer that we would help them, our churches would help them, and we would stand like we've never stood before. Thank you for joining me today. If you need anything, don't hesitate to email me at trumpetoftruth85 at gmail.com. Please listen on the YouTube channel. Please subscribe. Please comment. Please click on the notification bell so that you can be notified when we put content out on YouTube. Listen on Spotify. Listen on Google Podcast. Listen on Apple Podcast. We're out there. Do a search for Trumpet of Truth. Sometimes you may have to put my name, Greg Bray, after it, but uh, do a search and find it. You'll find a gold trumpet as the icon out beside the, the channel. And please listen. I love you all. I appreciate you. I want to help you. That's the purpose of this podcast. And I'll say it again as I've said it just about every time at ending the podcast. I'll see you later.